Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial series on exporting your iClone content into external software. In the first part of this tutorial, we talked about how to uh, purchase the export license uh, from the marketplace in the content store and then uh, export to Unreal via 3D Exchange, uh, FBX export. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna do a custom, I'm gonna create a custom motion and export that as well uh, for our uh, monster uh, orc character on the screen here. So let's go ahead right back into iClone. And we have this monster character we're just waiting to be animated. Now this character, uh, this freebie character, doesn't have uh, facial animation, so uh, we're not gonna worry about facial animation in this tutorial. We'll talk about that in uh, future export tutorials. But for now, I'm just gonna use a couple quick motion tools to create a quick motion. And I'm gonna start with the motion puppet tool here, which is uh, awesome for loopable motions. You can do stuff like, uh, these are idle motions, so uh, we have uh, mood motions as well, like this angry motion. You can see the orc getting frustrated. Ah, and then uh, the movement motions as well. We have uh, you know tiptoes um, and uh, depression and uh, you know all sorts of uh, funny motions. Uh, well, I'm just going to use an idle one right now. We're going to use this dancing motion. And in addition to uh, you know having the loopable motion right here. Uh, for your game or project or whatever. You can also um, uh, change it a little bit by using these parameter sliders on the right. If I want to you know, raise my hips or lower my hips, I could do that, for example. I could have this guy lean forward or backward to the bead if I wanted to. And again, that will record in real time. I'm just previewing now. Uh, you can also just press space to start, stop and start previewing. Uh, and then we have the exaggeration as well. If I wanted to uh, you know, increase the exaggeration. And down at the bottom, we have calm and energetic. If you want it to be really... You know, this guy's really getting into the groove here. We can uh, have him a little bit more energetic there. Uh, let's just take the exaggeration down a tad bit right there. And uh, I'll just record a few seconds of this. So you can also press Control Enter to uh, begin recording. And you can see that uh, our guy's just kind of going along and they'll press uh, space to stop recording. And if I uh, play back, if I go to the uh, first frame and play back, you can see we have this loopable uh, motion, which is all fine and dandy. Now, say for example, I wanted to like change his head movement a little bit uh, to uh, kind of bob up and down a little bit more because this guy looks like a guy that would get really into the groove. So let's go to uh, Direct Puppet and let's select our character's head bone. Direct Puppet is used for real-time puppet of individual uh, body parts. So you can choose uh, you know movement or you can choose rotation. I like primary rotation for the head. It often works quite well. So if I preview, for example, I can go Ooh, uh, like that. But obviously, we want to do that a bit more to the uh, to the groove, so to speak. So let's go ahead and uh, record this. And let's try to get my mouse movements nice and smooth. There we go. And I uh, just did a little extra head bob there for good measure. And then on top of that, we can just go back since we've recorded that first layer right there. So you can see um, our character's head bobbing like that. Maybe not the most uh, accurate tempo for the head bob, but that's fine. We'll just stop it right now. And let's go ahead and try the... Uh, forearm here as well. I'm going to select my character's forearm and this time I'm going to choose screen based rotation and move my character, uh, my camera to the front of the character. So let's go ahead and uh, select screen based rotation. And if I preview this, you can see I can, uh, if I go up, I can move my character's forearm up and down. I can move it down like this and I can move it from side to side because it's screen based. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a shot. I'm going to try and uh, have him like, you know, kind of moving his hand to the rhythm as well. So let's go ahead and record it like this. He slowly brings his uh, arm up and then, you know, he's just kind of getting into the groove right there. All right, so that's awesome. We have that. Let's just uh, play that back real quick. There we go. So there's our custom motion in a matter of uh, matter of minutes, maybe even a minute. Uh, what I can do now is if I want, I can uh, change my character's hand. Maybe I want him to be like kind of pointing a little bit. Um, who knows? Maybe he just likes that dance move. So let's just select edit motion layer. You can see the bones are really big. I don't like this. So I'm going to go up to edit bone mode right here. Select bone settings. Make sure you have effect to all bones selected. Change that number to one. And then you can actually see your character's mesh if you're doing sort of some editing like this. Now, if I press uh, what we have right now in the motion uh, in the uh, timeline, if I press F3, you can see we have this monster D right now. What we have is a motion clip. I'm going to hold the alt key and scroll down so I can zoom out. And you can see it's a puppet clip. And that puppet clip contains all the motion data that we've had so far. So if you use the motion puppet and direct puppet, that will automatically create a motion clip. However, if you use the edit motion layer tool, that will add some data. That's a, that's a keyframe tool. So you'll be doing a, you know, frame by frame animation. Say for example, I go to about here and I want my character to start, you know, pointing his finger. 
what I can do is I can just press reset here and that will add a keyframe. I'm going to actually go down to my uh, motion layer track here. Let's open that up and that will add a keyframe in my motion layer track, an absolute keyframe, which will um, have a keyframe for all my body parts right here. And uh, basically that's the start of my point where I'm going to start pointing his finger. So I can start going here and an easy way to get your character to point their finger is to just use the palm thing on the hand right here. So just crunch that up and then just take his finger and, you know, point his finger out like that. And then we can take his you know, second finger and kind of point it out like that. So then from here to here, he's going to start pointing his finger like that. And then it's like that, da, 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 like that. It's going along with the beat. And then here, what I can do is I can double click in my motion layer track and that'll add another absolute keyframe for all the body parts. And then here I can press reset and that'll reset it back to the uh, regular data that was included in our puppet clip. So we have the finger point going from here to here. I mean, you can do that for anything. You can do that for, um, you know, all sorts of different body movement from the feet to the head to anything you want. That's just a very, very simple example. So that's a very, very, very basic overview of those three motion tools and how you can use them in combination. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, add some accessories, uh, add an accessory, I guess, onto my character. And I can find that in the avatar section or accessories. I've downloaded these uh, headphones. These are also freebies you can find in the marketplace. So I'm just going to double click the headphones and I've downloaded these with an export license uh, as well, of course. And you can see they're a little bit too small for his head. So we need to make them a little bit larger. Let's press the R hot key and scale them up a little bit to something like that. And then we want to make them a little bit further up as well. So use the W hot key. And uh, what I want to do is, uh, there we go. We'll move them up to about here. There you go. Ah, that looks fine and dandy. Not perfect, but it'll work. And the accessory will stay on your character's head. But what we've done is we've actually moved those at frame 356. So maybe I want to move those down a little bit as well. There's kind of a little bit high on his head or we can even, you know, scale them. Uh, we'll just leave them right there. I think that looks fine. So since this is an accessory, it'll just stay on our character's head right there. But you can see if we go back to frame one, they'll resize back to a different size. And that's because, um, Frame 1 has the uh, very beginning uh, scale value and the very beginning transform value that uh, we saw earlier. Uh, what I can do is go all the way back to the very end. You can see they start to grow, strangely, the growing headphones. Uh, so all we need to do to keep them the same size for the entire duration is just simply right-click on them and select Remove Object Animation, and then they will no longer have object animation. And that's because we did it after the very last uh, scale and transform keyframe. So wherever you click, uh, right click and remove, uh, tr remove animation, it's going to remain at that position in that scale for the duration of your project. So just keep that in mind, a really easy, uh, quick shortcut there. So we have our, uh, you know, monster just grooving out right here. Now what I want to do is make sure this, uh, this motion is completely loopable, absolutely loopable. So let's select our character, press F3, go into our timeline, and we have this uh, motion clip. We can cancel out the motion layer track right now. So we just have our motion clip layer. And what I need to do to export this motion is I need to click and drag in our collect clip motion track. So I'm just going to do that right now. Click and drag to about here. And I'm going to go here. Oh, now before we do that, we want to make sure it's loopable, right? So uh, what I want to do is go to the very first frame right here. So this is the very first frame of our uh, motion. We can even, you know, start it about right here. Uh, maybe when he's kind of leaning to his right, I think right there, we can right click the clip. And we could select break to uh, cancel, to cut all that part off. But what I'm going to do is because I have that, uh, you know, finger pointing thing all set up over here, we're not going to worry about that right now. All I'm going to do is right click on the clip, maybe one frame in the second frame and right click it and select break here. And I'm going to take this data. I'm going to right click this clip data right here, copy it and copy it all the way back to the very end of the clip. Uh, we can paste it anywhere along the line here. And what this is going to do is this is going to ensure that the very beginning of our clip and the very end of our clip have the exact same pose, which makes it loopable. So let's go ahead and take a look at the timing. So we can you know, go back to here and then oop, we don't really want that. So let's go ahead and move it a little bit further ahead. Uh, he seems to be stopping a little bit earlier as well. So I think he stops around here. And so maybe right here we can actually just right click and break this clip, take off all this extra stuff right here and move the final clip a little bit forward and we can increase the transition area to something like that. And let's take a look at the, uh, the rhythm and the tempo we have going on here. So 
I think that's fine. Uh, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, what sort of position he's going to. As long as it's loopable, I think it looks just fine and dandy. So again, let's right click, or sorry, rather just left click and drag in our collect clip track all the way to the very beginning. So we'll just do that right now. And we can go zoom in to this area right here and make sure that the blue area, the selected area, coincides with the very last uh, part of our clip. And then just simply right click and add motion to 3D Exchange. If you have facial animation as well, you can add motion plus to 3D Exchange, but we're only going to add the motion to 3D Exchange. And that's an easy way to get your motion into 3D Exchange. And you can see the character we have now begins to do our, uh, our dance right here. Looks a little strange with a serious face. He's a very serious dancer. But that's essentially it. And then you have this animation clip in your uh, motion library. All you need to do is just select that. You can select add to perform. If it's not in the perform editor, it's not going to be exported as part of the FBX. So uh, keep that in mind. And we'll just call this a uh, groovy, groovy dance. There we go. And then what I can do is go back into iClone. We're going to add another uh, motion into iClone as well. So, uh, or to our character as well. So let's go to our motions over here. And if we go into our motion folder, let's see what we have here. Now I want to point out here that any iClone embedded content, that's like any content that's included with iClone, such as like, you know, even Mason and Heidi, the characters, all of that is export license ready. So you can export that if you have 3D Exchange Pipeline, you can export any of that embedded content and use that royalty free in your projects. So that's a ton of motions. That's something like 600 motions and a whole bunch of characters that can be exported once you purchase iClone. So let's go to some of uh, Mason's motions here. G6 uh, Mason, there we go. We have the idle, we have the sit idle, we have the move and we have the perform. Let's just go ahead and apply like an idle motion to our character since it's, you know, pretty boring. So that's, that's our idle. You know, for creating a video game here and we have an idle motion, we can just use that idle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna click and drag this directly from our uh, content manager. And I'm gonna go over to uh, 3D Exchange as well. And I'm gonna click and drag that directly into my motion library. And you can see here we have the idle. If I click on it, uh, I can actually just go ahead and play it. And uh, there's our idle motion right there. And if we decide to add this to the perform menu, we can do that, keep it named as idle, and then we're good to go. So now we have a custom created motion that I created in iClone, as well as an idle motion that's in embedded content. And you can export both of these to your game project uh, or whatever project you have royalty free. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and select uh, export to FBX. And I wanna call this, uh, you know, test orc, whoops, that's test orc 2 right there. And this time we actually need to include the animation as well. So let's change our preset to the Unreal preset first, and then it selects uh, include animation. Now we don't want to save one take per file, that will create multiple FBX files. So I'll just deselect that and it'll include it all in the same FBX file. And then we can just go ahead and select OK to export it to our desktop. And then we'll have our test orc 2. It's exporting that uh, FBX, the mesh, as well as all of those uh, or the cool animations that we have. So let's go ahead and uh, press OK and back to our desktop here. And then we have test orc 2fbx And keep in mind that all your materials will be saved to the same directory that you have if you uh, export an FBX. So I have, you know, all the test orc right here from before. That's the uh, folder. If I double click on that, we have all the materials uh, for your for your use in case you need to customize them or anything. So let's go back into Unreal and let's create a new uh, new folder. Let's right click on our content browser and select a new folder. Let's call this test orc. Whoops, whoops, we need to underscore here. Test orc two, there we go. And in this folder, that's where we'll uh, import our second uh, test orc. So let's just go ahead and delete this first guy. Go back to our desktop, click and drag our test orc two into our uh, Unreal project. There we go. Now this time, of course, we need to select import animations. That's basically all you have to do. If your character has facial animations, what you'll want to do, uh, especially if it has facial uh, morph shapes, you'll want to go to your mesh up here and then select uh, import morph targets. So if you have like a, a Daz character or, you know, a Mason or something like that, or any character with uh, blend shapes, you'll want to select import morph targets as well. Uh, make sure you have that selected if your character has facial animation and blend shapes. But we don't have that right now, we're not gonna worry about that. Let's just go ahead and select import all with our animations selected. And this will take just a minute, so I'll come back uh, once it's finished compiling all the shaders and loading all the animations, and we'll test out these motions. All right, so we're done compiling all the shaders and you can see all the uh, you know the notification for the uh, vert weighted stuff here, so we don't need to worry about that. Again, just uh, go ahead and close this message log. And let's import in 
our animation sequences just so just because that's the uh, fastest and easiest way to do it so let's import in the first one the uh anim groovy dance right here which is the one that we uh, saved and then we have the anim idle so we can import both of those in all right so all we have to do now is uh, give this a play and you can see we have our nice uh, loopable dance groove motion right there and we have our idle motion which was the embedded iClone content that we uh, just exported through 3d exchange uh, so maybe the uh, grooving could be a little bit more uh, you know better looped but uh, I just want to show you the basic concept here of how you can uh, do that in a few minutes uh, create your own custom motion in a few minutes and export that for use royalty free in your projects as well as the idle motion including all the characters as well that are embedded with iCone as well uh, I want to reiterate you can use those uh, as your uh, royalty free in your custom projects and everything like that so thank you so much for watching everyone and uh, hopefully uh, see you next time